What up, y'all? Welcome to another edition of What's in the Box Trek. Man, what is going on right now, man? The Lakers have won the end season tournament. Um, you know, they look to be falling off recently. Maybe the league is passing them by. We are starting from exactly where I like to start when I do this show, which is when there is complete panic. What's going to happen? What are we going to do, y'all? How are we, the collective we, all of us, we got to get in together, call Palinka, figure out how to fix this thing if we need to fix it at all, or do we kind of just let this one ride? I'm more on the ladder. Let's get into last night's game, man. Look, Lakers lost last night's game 108 to 124 to the Bulls. The story of this game is really, really, really simple, man. The Bulls outshot the Lakers from the three-point line 52% to 32% on roughly near around the same shots. Bulls took 34 threes. Lakers took 37. Lakers only made 12 of theirs. The Bulls made 18 of theirs. Every other stat is pretty much negligible, if I'm being 100% honest with you. Uh, even the stats that are really important for the Lakers, which are points off turnovers, the Lakers actually did outscore the Bulls in points off turnovers, and second chance points where the Bulls was negligible. The Bulls had 12. The Lakers had 10. Usually, if you've been watching these games, that has been the Lakers' problem. It has been those two categories. Of, of course, offensive rebounding, which the Lakers won 8-7. to seven. They lost in total rebounds. Not something that I want to see. But there were a couple moments they went small. Darvin Ham, what you doing? You tripping? You really are tripping. Uh, and they went to zone. And I will not tell you. I'm not going to get deep into this one. I don't know the statistical. I just loathe when the Lakers play zone. I loathe it. Period. I, I'm disgusted by a 2-3 zone from the Lakers. And, and they're always playing it poorly, by the way. The guards are way too high up. It's ridiculous. You need to not run zone. Anyway, back to my point here. I don't need to get too much into last night's game because I want to actually get into overall. What happened last night actually is speaking a lot to what's happening to the Lakers this season. First of all, the Lakers are not shooting the three-pointer very well at all. They are at about 34%, which is not great, and they are near the bottom of the league at about, I would say, 25th to 27th. I, I don't want to like stare at the stats in front of you guys or whatever. They also are about 28th, 27th and 28th in attempts. They're shooting less, and they're not shooting well. So it's good that they're shooting less. When you have a powerhouse like Anthony Davis in the paint, who's been playing great this December um, and the end of November, you do want to go there. LeBron's downhill game has been brilliant. Legs look a little tired, but you know who am I to say that when I can't even play half as good as he could? Or I don't know if there's a measure for how much different I am on the court than LeBron. But the reality is – a downhill team is what they are in their primary scoring positions, which is LeBron or primary scoring players, LeBron and AD. So these Torian Prince who shot well, didn't shoot well against uh, the Knicks, but has been shooting well over the last six or seven games. D'Angelo Russell, who started off pretty hot, but now is shooting pretty poorly over the last five or six games from three. They have to hit these open threes. If the Lakers can move up to about 37, 38% from three, they will be fine. They will be absolutely fine. But rolling at this this lower percentage, uh, I don't see it happening combined with some of the other issues they are seeing. Try what are these other issues? Well, the Lakers are 28th in offensive rebounding, leading them to 29th in second chance points themselves and 29th in opponent second chance points. So they're giving up rebounds and they're giving up points and they're not getting them back on the other end so this is actually the biggest problem for a team that scores in the paint to give up these these knickknack points here or there I think that is actually where your problem is I actually don't think the Lakers problem when I look look at this statistically is offense almost at all outside a three-point shot the Lakers are doing fine 111 offensive rating I mean I would like a better one I 112 defensive rating not much rather than be closer to like 100 102 the league average is about where the lakers are and that's not going to be good enough you know how i know it's not gonna be good enough the lakers are 9 and 11 versus plus 500 teams 9 and 11 right these are teams that score at a higher pace and play defense at a better pace right so that's the thing to note to note including pace let's speak about pace the lakers are eighth in the league in pace but 28th in the league in shot attempts. If you have checked out my show before, if you're new here, welcome. I talk about shot attempts a lot. 
if I shoot 10 times and you shoot four, I have a better chance of winning the game. And if I'm playing at a pace that's eighth in the league, but I'm not getting up enough shots, not, not a good thing. Not a good thing. And what am I settling for as well? One of the biggest issues with playing with LeBron James, a lot of people talk about how some players fall off when they're playing with LeBron. I can tell you what happens because I'm watching it sort of happen to Christian Wood. If you have a moment, look at Christian Wood, where he caught the ball last season when he was in Dallas versus where he catches the ball now as a Laker. If you are relegated to solely being a three-point shooter, your percentage is going to be poor. That's just the bottom line. Your, your game is also going to be off because any player will tell you seeing the ball go through the hoop is what matters the most. Even if it's a layup, a little teardrop, a little jump hook, anything to see the ball start to go through the hoop. If you're missing your first two or three uh, three-pointers, man, it just it starts to bother you. It starts to weigh on you a little bit. And you can see that a little bit in Christian Wood. You can see it even in Torian Prince and, of course, D'Angelo Russell, who we can get into next. But I, that is one of the notes about playing with LeBron James that a lot of people, his detractors and his uh, non-detractors, I don't want to call anybody like anything disparaging, that's the part they don't get is that he relegates most players to being three-point shooters because he draws so much attention that his kick leaves you wide open and you got to hit that shot. You have to hit that shot. And in years past, even the year the Lakers won, it just seems like people come to the Lakers and just cannot hit that shot. I'm not sure what that is or why that happens, but that seems to be the issue. So What's next? What do the Lakers need to do? Well, a lot of people have placed this squarely on D'Angelo Russell's shoulders, and I, uh, no, I'm not with it. I'm not with it at all. I do will admit that the Lakers play a little slow behind D'Angelo Russell, but D'Angelo Russell is the only player outside of LeBron, who probably is second to D'Lo, that force feeds Anthony Davis. Literally force feeds him. Right now, D'Angelo Russell is averaging 15 points, six assists, on 47% shooting, 46.7% shooting on two turnovers. His assist-to-turnover ratio is top 50 in the league right now. You're getting 27 points worth of production in 20 minutes on average. I don't know how to say this any better. And I do understand that there needs to be a scapegoat. But it's not d -Lo. Now... Let's be reasonable here, Laker fans. All right? All you other fans can sit out. Laker fans, let's be a tad bit reasonable. Every time there's a scapegoat, it happens to coincide with someone who's not all the way well-liked by sports media. Be honest. Be honest. All right? It's always somebody who's not well-liked by sports media. So, chill out. 27 points worth of production in 20 minutes. He's only shooting nine shots a game. I will admit that he needs to, absolutely needs to, hit that open three a lot more, especially tonight as you face the number two team behind the Celtics. Okay, I guess. But the best team in the West right now. Now let's talk about Minnesota just a little bit because I think we've, we've kind of cleared the air on the Lakers. What do I think they need to do next? They need to actually play. <laughs> a lot of this, we're going to get through the game casually and win at the end or win in one quarter or whatever to try to preserve our players. That's not going to happen. And this is the problem with having an older player like LeBron James and a player who's had some injury issues like Anthony Davis. They're going to try to win these games without as much effort, and that's not possible in this league where a lot of some teams that don't make this play and are going to be 500 teams. It's 11 spots. 11 teams vying for eight spots. It's not, this is not a game. It's not a drill. This year might be the most parity we've seen ever in the NBA. Now, you can count the Detroit to the league if you want, and you can count the Spurs to the league if you want, but the reality is, no, man. It is, it's going to be a dogfight this year, and this is not a year that you can actually rest on your laurels and hope to win at the end. Last year was an, an anomaly. This year, that is not happening. The league is too good for that. Now, a little bit of a note on Minnesota, not statistically, just personally. Minnesota was this good last year. Carl Anthony Towns was injured, and I don't want to hear – Anything else from you, okay? All this story about, mm, this is a, a, you know, Cinderella team. No, Minnesota has been this good, and y'all need to stop acting like 
that injury didn't matter last year as it frees up Anthony Edwards to be the great player that he is becoming and is. This is the Minnesota you're going to have to learn to deal with because they're going to be like this for a while. And that Rudy Gay trade was not as bad as y'all tried to make it out because now the teams that don't have no bigs aren't playing very well and the teams that do have some size are actually putting up some real numbers right now in the league, right? So keep that in mind that you're not playing and you weren't playing last year against some some, some slouches. McDaniels was injured last year. That was a big deal for uh, in the play-in. That was a huge deal against the Lakers. This is the team that it would have been last year, or at least close to it, right now today in front of your face. So give Minnesota its due right now, and let's see if they can swing this as far as into the playoffs. I'm a Laker fan, so hopefully not. But for those of y'all who are fans of basketball or fan of the Timberwolves, hey, good luck to you. Right now, my final answer is no need to make any moves. And if you did make a move, I'm making a move for a player not, you can't get him unless you trade a lot, but I'm making a move for a player like Siakam or somebody that could play at the three with Link that's going to give me offense and defense and hit an open three. I don't know what Siakam's three-point percentage is. I feel like it's not great, but I haven't checked it statistically. But I need somebody that would take Tari and Prince's spot since I'm going to have to lose D'Lo in that trade and my my actual running the offense and my sister going to drop. I'm going to move LeBron to that point, which is going to tire him out. There's a lot of factors here, a lot of reasons why I say you need to stand pat and play the game and stay out of that zone. Anyway, this has been What's in the Box Trek, man. I appreciate each and every one of you all. I will be here after tonight's game, which I feel like the Lakers are going to play well in. But I know that this is more hope than optimism. So we'll see what happens. Peace.